All right, I'm gonna adjust the bevels a little more. Uh, it's still fairly thick. Normally I like to go dime thickness, um, but I don't know what kind of steel this is. And I suspect it's high speed steel. I've done some more research, uh, which is very, very tricky to get the right kind of heat treat. And I anticipate that this is gonna warp horrendously. So I really wanna keep it thick along the edge in the spine. Um, so I'm gonna continue doing some work on this and then we're gonna go into the heat treat. Uh, oh, I'm gonna have to remember to drill the handle, uh, handle pin holes uh, for attaching a handle. All right, so this might be the single most important part of the uh, build process. Uh, as you can see, I have the, uh, the, the holes drilled for the handle pins, right there and right there. Uh, I have done a little more, a little more grinding bevels are more even now. So now, the most important step in any build, uh, whether it be a knife or a cabinet or anything, you got to stamp it with your touch mark. So I'm thinking about putting it, putting it right there. And I heat it up and then uh, normalize the blade, which consists of taking your blade, heating it up past the critical point. Uh, which it can be hardened, taking it out, uh, letting it cool down to room temperature, and then doing that three or four times. Uh, I might even do it five times because I have no idea what kind of steel this is. And then after that, we'll take it out, dunk it in oil, and then it should hopefully be hardened. If not, we'll move on to water. But water quenches scare me, so. I'd like to avoid that if possible. Thermocycle it four times um, to make sure to mitigate that as best as possible. Uh, now what I like to do is I'm going to take a piece of tubing and I'm going to put it in the forge. And then this is going to make it so the flame doesn't have direct contact with the, the flame. So it will heat up even
Looks straight as an arrow. Awesome. At this point, the steel, uh, if it hardened properly, is extremely hard and brittle, <clears throat> similar to like a ceramic. Uh, make sure that this is cooled completely off before I do anything else with it, because it could ruin the heat treat. Uh, this steel actually, ooh, that could have been bad. This steel actually, um, it really, really gets a lot of scale on it. I've never quite seen anything like it. Um, it's not that it gets a lot of scale, it's a, it gets a lot of flaky scale. Like in the quench, as soon as I put it in and took it out, um, it, it looked like the, the entire midsection of the blade had exploded. There was so much scale. Uh, but this heat treated beautifully. Uh, it is straight as an arrow. Uh, hopefully, didn't crack anywhere. I don't see anywhere where it could have. But. Uh, it should be good now to give it the file test. The reason why we give it the file test is because files are hardened steel. And if the file is able to bite into the blade, uh, we know that uh, our, our piece hasn't hardened. Alright, so this is the moment of truth. Didn't ha did it harden correctly? Uh, okay, that isn't, that's not super hard, uh, but it did harden to an extent. It's not perfect, but listen to the difference. So here's the unhardened part of the blade, and here's the hardened part. You could hear it, uh, it has a higher pitch of the, the, the file skating off. Uh, so I, th I think it should be good. Uh, I'm going to clean it up and then we'll see. The next course of action you're going to want to take is you're going to want to start heating the spine uh, with a torch <clears throat> until uh, the blade actually oxidizes and you could see a color change. The color that we're aiming for it doesn't really matter what the what color the spine is, as long as the, the cutting edge is a, a nice straw color, uh, like a goldish orange yellow. Uh, so you could also do this, uh, this is called tempering. You could temper it in your oven, uh, depending on the steel, different temperatures. Um, but I'm just going to clamp this in tongs and figure out how to do this. So you just want to apply heat to the spine until you draw that temper down. You're going to want to make sure your blade is cleaned up a little bit for this so you can see the bare metal because uh, you won't be able to see the color change through oxides. Alright, once you're satisfied with the color, dunk it in water. Alright, so I took the, the blade up to 400 grit. Um, <clears throat> it's not, not a mirror polish by any means, but we're not going to be keeping it at a, uh, polished in a polished state. Uh, we're actually going to dip this into ferric chloride, um, <clears throat> which you can make just by mixing uh, muriatic acid from the hardware store with steel wool. You could, you could even use like vinegar, or I've seen people even do it with instant coffee. So this isn't super, super complicated chemistry stuff or anything. So uh, I'm going to dip this in the acid. Well, first off, I'm going to wipe it down with peroxide. And then I'm going to dip it in the acid. And the acid is going to bring out the pattern of the Damascus.